March 21st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 8 from the Old Testament. When the Lord your God brings you to the land that you are going to occupy and forces out many nations before you, Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations more numerous and powerful than you, and he delivers them over to you and you attack them, you must utterly annihilate them, make no treaty with them and show them no mercy. You must not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons, for they will turn your sons away from me to worship other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will erupt against you and he will quickly destroy you. Instead, this is what you must do to them. You must tear down their altars, shatter their sacred pillars, cut down their sacred Asherah poles, and burn up their idols. For you are a people holy to your Lord your God. He has chosen you to be his people, prized above all others on the face of the earth. It is not because you were more numerous than all the other peoples that the Lord favored and chose you, for in fact you were the least numerous of all peoples. Rather, it is because of his love for you and his faithfulness to the promise he solemnly vowed to your ancestors that the Lord brought you out with great power, redeeming you from the place of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So realize that the Lord your God is the true God, the faithful God who keeps covenant faithfully with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, but who pays back those who hate him as they deserve and destroys them. He will not ignore those who hate him, but will repay them as they deserve. So keep the commandments, statutes, and ordinances that I today am commanding you to do. If you obey these ordinances and are careful to do them, the Lord your God will faithfully keep covenant with you as he promised your ancestors. He will love and bless you and make you numerous. He will bless you with many children. With the produce of your soil, your grain, your new wine, your oil, the offspring of your oxen, and the young of your flocks in the land which he promised your ancestors to give you. You will be blessed beyond all peoples. There will be no barrenness among you or your livestock. The Lord will protect you from all sickness, and you will not experience any of the terrible diseases that you knew in Egypt. Instead, he will inflict them on all those who hate you. You must destroy all the people whom the Lord your God is about to deliver over to you. You must not pity them or worship their gods, for that will be a snare to you. If you think, these nations are more numerous than I, how can I dispossess them? You must not fear them. You must carefully recall what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and all Egypt. The great judgments you saw, the signs and wonders, the strength and power by which he brought you out. Thus the Lord your God will do to all the people you fear. Furthermore, the Lord your God will release hornets among them until the very last ones who hide from you perish. You must not tremble in their presence, for the Lord your God who is present among you is a great and awesome God. He, the God who leads you, will expel the nations little by little. You will not be allowed to destroy them all at once, lest the wild animals overrun you. The Lord your God will give them over to you. He will throw them into a great panic until they are destroyed. He will hand over their kings to you, and you will erase their very names from memory. Nobody will be able to resist you until you destroy them. You must burn the images of their gods, but do not covet the silver and gold that covers them so much that you take it for yourself, and thus become ensnared by it, for it is abhorment to the Lord your God. You must not bring any abhorrent things into your house and thereby become an object of divine wrath along with it. You must absolutely detest and abhor it, for it is an object of divine wrath. You must keep carefully all these commandments I am giving you today so that you may live, increase in number, and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised to your ancestors. Remember the whole way by which he has brought you these 40 years through the desert so that he might, by humbling you, test you to see if you have it within you to keep his commandments or not. 
So he humbled you by making you hungry and then feeding you with unfamiliar manna. He did this to teach you that humankind cannot live by bread alone, but also by everything that comes from the Lord's mouth. Your clothing did not wear out, nor did your feet swell all these forty years. Be keenly aware that just as a parent disciplines his child, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you must keep his commandments, live according to his standards, and revere him. For the Lord your God is bringing you to a good land, a land of brooks, springs, and fountains flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, and pomegranates of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat food in plenty and find no lack of anything, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you can mine copper. You will eat your fill and then praise the Lord your God because of the good land he has given you. Be sure you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, ordinances, and statutes that I am giving you today. When you eat your fill, when you build and occupy good houses, when your cattle and flocks increase, when you have plenty of silver and gold, and when you have abundance of everything, be sure you do not feel self-important and forget the Lord your God who brought you from the land of Egypt, the place of slavery, and who brought you through the great fearful desert of venomous serpents and scorpions, an arid place with no water. He made water flow from a flint rock and fed you in the desert with manna, which your ancestors had never before known, so that he might, by humbling you, test you, and eventually bring good to you. Be careful not to say, my own ability and skills have gotten me this wealth. You must remember the Lord your God, for he is the one who gives ability to wealth. If you do this, he will confirm his covenant that he made by oath to your ancestors, even as he has to this day. Now if you forget the Lord your God at all and follow other gods, worshiping and prostrating yourself before them, I testify to you today that you will surely be annihilated, just like the nations the Lord is about to destroy from your sight, so he will do to you because you would not obey him. God, thank you for taking such incredible care of us. You know, we resist and we fight and we fall away from you. And the whole time, all you're trying to do is love us and protect us and have us be obedient to your word, which helps guide us. I love these verses where you're talking about all of the things that you have given them and will give to them. And then a reminder of where those blessings come from. And I think so often we have so many blessings in our life, especially here in America. We have so many blessings in our life that we really just don't take the time to stop and thank you for how incredibly blessed we are. Even back then, Israel needed a reminder that here you had saved them from slavery. You had brought them through the desert, including quite a few situations in the desert starvation, um, drowning, uh, and brought them into this promised land that's just filled, filled with blessings and a reminder of all the blessings that got them to that point. And now you're about to overload them with blessings. So today, God, I just want to stop and, and thank you. Thank you for all the blessings that I am fully aware of. Thank you also for all the blessings behind the scenes that I never see the positioning and the people and the situations uh, that cause me to be so incredibly blessed as your child. God, so many people say, oh, I only read the New Testament because the God of the Old Testament is really mean and angry. And I do know that you are angry and angry that we continue to choose sin over your promised land of milk and honey. But I also know that the God I know of the Old Testament is kind and generous and faithful beyond belief. You are consistent and you continually pursue Israel just like you continue to pursue us for a very powerful relationship. We don't have that in our own life. We have people who love us, but they're broken people, so they're going to hurt us. 
but you are the only person in the entire world who will never ever leave us we may have at times in our life where we feel lonely but we will never be alone and how amazing is that you are this gigantic sovereign God that rules the worlds that you have created that is so big that my mind can't even imagine what that looks like and yet you want to be intimate with me to be my father to discipline me to love me to encourage me to correct me that out of all of the situations in the world you're controlling and all the people and and everything that you have going on that we are still so valuable to you. God, that is just amazing to me. And I watch a reflection of our relationship in your, ref in your words of your relationship with Israel over and over and over again. Thank you today for your blessings. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that with you I am never alone. I love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.